Hey, math students. So today what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, functions that are written uh, in rectangular form, that is using x's and y's, and we're going to convert those to functions using r and theta, polar uh, coordinates or polar, polar variables. Uh, and let's start with this one right above my head, y equals 4 times x. So the clever ones among you will look at that and say, I know what that's going to be. It's going to be theta equals something. You're right, okay? And how do you know that? Well, because that's a direct variation. That's a line that's going through the origin, and you probably remember from last time, anytime you have a line going through the origin in polar form, that's just going to be theta equals some constant. So, what's the constant? Well, uh, I guess in order to do this, we need to remember what our uh, four identities are that help us uh, go from polar to Cartesian and Cartesian to polar. That is r squared equals x squared plus y squared. The tangent of theta equals y over x. Uh, x equals r cosine of theta and y equals r sine of theta. Okay? That's, this is what we're going to use. And in particular, what we're going to use right now is these last two. Okay? They're going to, those are the ones you use to go from, uh, well, I say that actually on this first one, we're going to use the second one. But other than that, we're going to use the last two. All right. So uh, what do we do to uh, turn this into uh, polar coordinates? Let's divide both sides by x and we get y over x equals 4. Well, y over x, that's just the tangent of theta. So you get the tangent of theta equals 4. That means theta must be the inverse tangent of 4, which is approximately uh, what's that? 1.326? 1.326 radians. So that's what our equation would look like using polar coordinates or using polar variables is theta equals 1.326. Easy enough. Uh, let's look at, well now let's look at a, uh, a line that doesn't go through the origin. Let's look at y equals... One half, what is it? One half x plus three. Okay, now on this one, this isn't as simple as just dividing both sides by x and taking the inverse tangent. No, because you got that three in there that's messing things up. So this time, uh, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use these two substitutions. And I'm going to have to say r times the sine of theta equals one half times r cosine of theta plus three. And let's get that over on this side. So we have r sine of theta minus one half r cosine of theta equals three. And remember, I want to solve for r. When you have, when you're writing equations in polar coordinates, generally your independent variable is going to be theta and your dependent variable is going to be r. So that means you want to write it in the form of r equals some function of theta. So that means I want to get r by itself. So I'm just going to factor out an r here and I get this. And so then just divide by that. So r equals 3 divided by the sine of theta minus 1 half cosine of theta. There you go. There's your line. Matter of fact, you can see from this that uh, you could write any line using this. Uh, well, actually, any line other than the one that we did before, other than something going through the origin. Uh, you can write any line like this where you have uh, your y-intercept and your slope right there. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do, uh, I know, let's do a rational function. Um, let's do y equals 9 over x. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So first off, remember what this looks like? This is going to be, everybody knows what y equals 1 over x looks like, right? Well, this is the same way. It's just stretched out a little bit. Uh, it's going to look kind of like this. All right. It's a rational function. It's got uh, the two axes or the asymptotes. It's going to go through the point 3, 3, and negative 3, negative 3. Uh, and that's just to get an idea of what we're dealing with here. So how to put that into uh, polar coordinates? I guess we'll just... Make this substitution again, okay? 
So r times the sine of theta equals 9 divided by r cosine of theta. Bleh. Okay, well multiply both sides times r cosine of theta and you'll get r squared times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta equals uh, 9, which means r squared equals 9 over uh, the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Okay? Now at this point, I'm going to do something tricky, and that is I'm going to say, hey, sine times cosine, I remember something about that. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to multiply both my numerator and my denominator times 2. And so that way in the denominator I get 2 sine theta cosine of theta, and you know what that is. That's going to be 18 over the sine of 2 theta, haha, -ha, which is 18 times the cosecant of 2 theta. And that's what r squared is. So what that means is r is, square root of 18 is 3 root 2, so 3 root 2 and times the, co times the square root of cosecant of 2 theta. For me, the most important part is that you get to here. r squared equals 9 over uh, sine theta cosine theta. Uh, but if you want to be nice and uh, uh, if you want it to be as tidy as possible, you'll simplify it down to there. Okay? Let's do another one. Let's do, uh, let's do one more and let's do a parabola. Okay? This one is y equals 3x squared, okay? And again, uh, let's just do our substitutions. So that means r sine theta equals 3 r squared cosine squared of theta, okay? And uh, how about we divide both sides by r and that'll get us the sine of theta equals 3r times the cosine of theta. And uh, so, sorry, that's cosine squared of theta. And if I divide uh, everything by 3 and cosine squared of theta, that means I'm going to get r equals the sine of theta over 3 cosine squared of theta. And let me think of that this way. One third times sine of theta over cosine of theta times 1 over cosine of theta and that gets me 1 third times the tangent of theta times the secant of theta. That's what R is. Okay? It's not so hard. Okay? Basically, everything starts with this. Well, almost. The first one started with that. But almost everything else will start with making those substitutions, and then just solving for r. That's all you got to do, okay? Hope this helps. See you next video.